Hello, everyone, and welcome to the premiere, the amazingness of Gehenna Academy. Let's everyone give a round of applause. This has been a uh, worthwhile time in the making. You know, I'm going to increase my mic a little bit. I'm sorry here. Uh, I am super excited to start this off. A brand new series, a brand new Monster Hearts. It's going to be amazing. Uh, fans for Gehenna Valley, I hope you're in here. Newcomers, I hope you're in here. Fans of Mantra, I hope you're in here. Before we begin and delve into it, let me just go over some basics and we'll do some introductions and then we'll go get right into the nitty fucking gritty. All right, uh, first things first, this is uh, a rated R stream. I'm going to give you a content warning. There's going to be violence. There's going to be blood. There's going to be gore. Uh, there's going to be sexual situations. There's going to be serious talks about stuff. There's going to be psychological horror, talks about trauma, and just all the uh, kind of insanity that comes with it but we're gonna have a lot of fun if that's not your thing or you feel uncomfortable at all uh do not hesitate to click off the screen uh maybe go watch some of our other content you know we did an awesome game void heart symphony last saturday if i do say so myself uh but if your heart's not in it and your stomach's not in it uh, totally fine that being said uh i hope you enjoy the episode today uh, episode one from the gallows and yeah i hope you have an amazing time so let's get right into the show uh first things first let me go ahead and introduce my amazing cast starting with the order that we discussed go ahead introduce yourself tell us about your character and let's go um <laughs> hi guys i am rena i'll be playing as ivy tonight um, I am the neighbor. I have recently just transferred to Gehenna Academy. It's been two weeks and I'm still the new kid. So I have no idea what's going on at school. Uh, I guess I am next. Uh, hello, my name is Dordan Ali, also known as Werewolf Fields. I'm playing Neil, or at least that's the name he goes by, the ghost. The most important thing to remember about Neil is that he's dead. Also, that's probably the only thing you remember about him. Uh, both of our pronouns are he, him, and I'm really excited. Kind of terrified, but excited. Hi, I'm Chantal. Uh, I am playing the Fae, uh, Melody. Um, pronoun, my pronouns are they, she. Ellie's pronouns are she, they. So have fun with that one. Um, the best thing to remember about Melody is Melody. I mean, like, what else is there? To, what else is there to be said, really? Very excited. <laughs> Hi, y'all. I'm Alyssa. Pronouns they them, and I will be playing Arden, the worm who uses any pronouns. Uh, you know, they just are a nice person who's interested in this new kid, um, and maybe some other people. Um, related to our other characters. All right, that means I'm next. Hi, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm going to be playing Isaac the Queen, uh, pronouns he, him. And primarily he's been here for a while and he pretty much runs the school. If you need anything, he can get it to you via his crew, the Abandoned. And I will be your lovely storyteller slash master of ceremonies MC, whatever you would like to call me. I am Nick Francia at Nobleman Nick, the stream producer here over at Gehenna uh, Gaming, where you can find me on a lot of stuff here and there. Uh, I did a show called The Deep Dive that was some pretty cool. I also did an amazing show over on Carrying Comfort called The Interstitial War of Kingdom Hearts. Uh, but I'm the MC. I'll be playing the um, crazy cast of characters and the uh, horror behind the walls, as it were, of Gehenna Academy. But I am merely a stagehand to the main actors of this. And yet again, I will say, I hope you're all ready. So let's everyone take a deep breath. And let's drop into our story. Gehenna Academy, Chapter 1, From the Gallows. It's cold. It's cold and brisk, and the leaves have gone off the trees, and all that's left 
his thorny branches and hellish signs. It's... It's not a nice place. It's lonely, isolated. But it is a haven. A haven, you hope. But you we're not really sure. And secrets have a way of worming themselves out. Even when you try to hold them down so deep. Our characters here would know a lot about that. We see the camera pan across the floors and various buildings of Gehenna Academy. We see the school isolated from the rest of the area. And we come into one room in particular. This room looks burned and singed in places. On an abandoned floor where sounds cannot be heard. In the droves of the early morning. Tell me, Neil, how is life among the living but unliving? It's been so long since I've consistently been around. You know, <laughs> I pop up once in a while, maybe make a friend or two, but that's it. More importantly, there's no one like me anymore. You know, no one different. But things are different now. Everyone here is different. It doesn't feel the same. I don't think it could ever feel the same, but it's more than I've ever had. Occasionally you might hear the rats scurrying about or someone retreat to the upstairs for a quick makeout session. Maybe to smoke alone along the forlorn planks of wood. They don't see you. They don't know you. But you still have managed to integrate yourself. Tell me, Neil. When the morning bell tolls, what do you do? Well, I never used to have a set schedule, but the best thing about school is that you get to do things, which means, you know, the morning bell, I, uh, I head over to magical practitioning class. It's not something I think I'm really good at. And honestly, there's a lot more theory involved than I thought there'd be, but you know, it's fun. Get to learn something new. Yeah. And as you walk into class, it's it's not hard to see that someone else is arriving about the same time you are. Uh, joined by a literal posse. Right. Right. Forgotten, that's why I don't like this class. And as... Some people cheer, some people shudder, but mostly everyone just gives this person dirty looks, but dares not to say anything. But before we continue this scene, we'll ride the clock. Tell me, how does Isaac get... How does he get ready for the day? Well, before my 10 a.m. class, I make sure I do... I wake up a little bit earlier and do a nice jog in nearby woods to help clear my mind and get myself ready and then when I'm done with that I go back to my dorm and make sure I uh, outline my itinerary before I head off to class I do send a text to the abandoned to meet up with me and also I do set a reminder on my phone that to um, set up a meeting with them after four at the library yes and funny enough there's also another text on your phone when you wake up it's that 
of uh, one of the teachers, Professor Gray. She says that uh, the tome you requested has been found. And that she's ready to uh, check it out to you whenever you're ready. Fantastic. Isaac, do you do anything specifically else before you uh, head towards your first class? Beyond that, I make sure all my stuff in my room, my computer and everything is locked and leave it, make sure everything's nice, tight and secure. And I walk out with my headphones in. Now, a lot of classes happen at once during the first period. Uh, a lot of interesting things, I should say. There's another class happening over in the makeshift greenhouse, of course. That is the class of supernatural biology. Or not in the greenhouse, sorry, in another classroom. Melody, how do you prepare for your day? Melody, I wake up, I don't know, it's not light, uh, it's not bright yet, maybe three in mm -hmm. the morning, um, and it's time to wander around the school and see what's happening that's not happening that might be happening, um, and then it's time to wander the grounds um, and spend some time outside and then watch the sunrise and then go to my first class the the sunrises here are interesting are they not they're mm. they're not as vibrant as back in your home no almost muted not as many colors it's a little sad isn't it yeah do you it's like they've mm. forgotten some Melody, do you feel pity for these mortals? Um, I suppose. Yeah. Less pity, more confusion? Yes. Why would something like this happen? How can anyone really How allow it? Yeah. How are they still alive? How do they, how do they keep going? Speaking of different people that don't seem to belong in this place, especially at this school, how does our resident Normie uh, Ivy get ready for her day um i woke up late because for some reason my phone did not charge last night so i just put on quickly hurriedly put on my my uniform which i for some reason other students don't wear but they said it at, in the orientation it's everyone's supposed to wear a uniform so I hurriedly put it on, and then as I'm running towards the first class, I'm already putting on my tie. Hopefully, I brought my notebook. I don't know what else you need for a biology class because they're really vague in their instructions. Or maybe I just don't understand. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably got in last minute to the class and all this heveled and... Whew. I'm here. <laughs> yes, you definitely get in last minute to uh, so much so that uh, the teacher, uh, Professor Watson, kind of uh, crosses his arms as you enter. Sorry. Um. Late again. I'm Ivy? gonna. I'm really sorry, Professor. I'm really sorry. I promise I'll wake up earlier t tomorrow. Hopefully. Repeated lies or repeated sins, Ivy? 
I'm really sorry, Professor. Uh, I'll take my seat now. And uh, he just nods. There's one person, though, that doesn't have a class that I, uh, at this time. Hardened. Do you do you just sleep in? Is that was that the goal? Oh. Oh, you're muted. Oh, let me see. Oh, never mind. You reconnected. I'm sorry. You're yeah. good. <laughs> Arden is not a morning person, and they know that well enough to not schedule an early class. But unfortunately, that means that everyone interesting is in class when they have you know half an hour free to sort of hang out before their classes start. And yeah, you, you're you're quite the opportunist, uh, one would say, Arden. I mean, one might say that, but I mean, you know, worms and dragons often don't waste their time, or or maybe it's because they would they would never dare call a worm's time wasted. Exactly. Whatever I'm doing with my time, it's all to some greater purpose. So, are you just hanging out in your room? Or have you decided to kind of flock amongst uh, the others as well? Maybe social butterfly a bit? Yeah, I mean, they don't have very many close friends, but, you know, making some small connections here and there is certainly something that they like to do in their spare time. Uh, as you're kind of pacing around uh, the halls of uh, Wing B, you see, first thing you notice is that your roommate, uh, Lucida, is absent as per the usual. Um, she tends to take the, or they tend to take the early classes and then kind of get back and pull up in the, your room as you've noticed. But two people that don't have uh, a class are the Ackerman brothers. As you can hear, their loud, uh, kind of boisterous, I guess the, the word I could describe it as is broing. Uh, as they're kind of yelling and uh, talking and eating and one of them is challenging the other to push-ups. Uh, you know, despite their very, very dense heads, they kind of have this intimidating factor to them that no one will stand to. Yeah, you know, there's no reason right now to go engage with them, but I can watch, see if anything interesting happens, and if it does, you know, that could be helpful. Yeah, they, they definitely don't mind the audience. In fact, you think maybe they might show off even more for you um, as they get into an impromptu arm muscling match uh, halfway through. <laughs> uh, which, which uh, surprisingly enough, or not surprisingly enough, uh, leads with uh, Reese Ackerman uh, taking Tyler Ackerman and almost uh, throwing him through the table. <laughs> You've heard Tyler's Minotaur strength is strong, but Reese's uh, demonic strength is even stronger. So as Arden hangs out, we'll kind of shift over. Going back to magical practitioning. The professor, Professor Sun Yang, more of a laid back guy, uh, but he's he's not one to slack. He's actually teaching you now um, about locator spells, as you were learning yesterday, uh, kind of continuing off of this, teaching you that. Uh, using a full, you know, a few twigs and sticks and a personal connection, a more of a sympathetic connection to an item, uh, you could easily create what is essentially a magical compass that will locate you to whatever you're seeking. How how are Neil and Isaac? Are they, are they well in tune to the lesson? Or is it something you really don't care about? I mean, Neil's fascinated. Uh, when it comes to the, like, the actual practitioning stuff, 
he seems to do pretty well for some reason. But when it comes to trying to record stuff from books, that's when he struggles. And right now, this is a very like, I feel like this is a very hands-on lesson. Mm -hmm. So he's excelling and is just enjoying himself. There's few things that really make someone feel alive and playing around with magic is definitely one of them. Yeah, for, for Isaac, he, he's got, he's primarily focusing on the lesson because he actually does care. He takes these, his classes for a reason, not just to screw around. And he does find any information from them useful. But he also does occasionally give Neil the eye and just kind of like, hey, how you doing from across? And you make sure he looks around the area to make sure how everybody's looking today. Isaac uh, practically acting like the president of this place, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> kind of wave, uh, waving and kind of, uh, yeah, noticing everybody. <laughs> was the, was the world. I think I leaned closer to Isaac and I whispered, do you need help? Is that what this is? No, that's, that's not what it is. I'm not stupid. You do know that, right? I, I mean, I need help sometimes. I don't think needing help is, you weren't asking a question. No, that wasn't. No, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, I think that's our first rule of the game. Oh, God. <laughs> Isaac, can you please rule 2d6 pusher cold as you are shutting down Neil with that little comment of yours? All right. Because, yeah, how how dare he kind of ask you if you need help? You're you're the star of the show. <laughs> I got <Yes>. eight. <laughs> I got eight. You got an eight? You said? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Nate. So you're going to choose one from below, uh, but you're going to come across poorly, and they're going to give you a condition in return. Uh, Neil, do you currently possess any strings on Isaac? That is a good question. I don't think I he have does. no strings on Isaac, and Isaac has no strings on me. All right. So, Isaac, you can either uh, gain a string on Neil, you can give Neil a condition, or you can take one forward against Neil in the future. I'm going to take a string on neil and neil you get to uh give isaac a condition good Ooh, that's good um <laughs> <laughs> i feel like isaac's a little bit embarrassed all right Embarrassed it is. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, Professor Soon is like, gentlemen, is there a problem? Not at, not at all, Professor. Please continue. Because, you know, Isaac, if you think you know the spell so much, you know, why don't, why don't you come up here? Why don't, why don't you show us how the how the spell works? I'm sure you can teach maybe uh, Mr. Park or something as he kind of gestures to Elliot, who's just kind of, or uh, Marshall, I should say, who's just kind of um, like doodling in his notebook. He, he's not here because he wants to. He's here because you're here. And you made your uh, schedules kind of sync up that way. Uh, I, I, professor, I think... I'm sorry for ruining your time. I'm, I'm I'm duly sorry. I was just talking with Neil because I think I may need some help with some of this stuff. You know, just, you know, you got to make sure you always get the time to practice. Oh, oh you know. I, I mean, I offered help, Professor, but he said no. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Isaac. Uh, for the class, go ahead and take the two sticks. And he kind of hands you two of these like long like twigs, uh, uh -huh. looking like they were uh, uh, freshly, freshly picked from the uh, the muddy cold ground this morning. <laughs> okay, uh, so should I roll something or should I just act like an idiot? Uh, go ahead and just roll me a straight two d six plus dark. Okay, I got a eight. Cool. Um, the spell kind of like you can you focus on something. What are you focusing on specifically? Like, what are you trying to find? I should say. 
Does, can it be anything, like a person or an object? It's, it? it's got to be someone. Yeah, an object or a person. Uh, I'll say, uh, I'll say Ivy. Ivy. Ooh. Uh, yeah. It starts trying to point like in a random direction, kind of like trying to in the walls of this place, um, for just a second. Uh, but it occasionally starts like going haywire and kind of points to other things, uh, whether it be your uh, court or uh, sometimes um, in the direction of someone that is not in any classes right now. And you're just, it's just like, it it's mainly focuses on the direction of where you assume Ivy is, uh, but it is very kind of faltering. And uh, Professor Yang kind of looks and this kind of just nods. Well, honestly, shit, not bad for your first attempt. Thank you. Now, please don't cause any disturbances anymore, I should say. Yes, sir. And I just right. hand him the sticks and go back to my seat. All right. There you go. Set your ass down. And Great job. <laughs> he continues I don't say anything. Lesson. Um, Chris Christina kind of slugs you against the ar arm Isaac. Like, like the playful way she does. She goes, yeah, uh, great, great job, Isaac. You really showed them. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for your support. <laughs> and we kind of just, we switch over to uh, Melody and Ivy. Uh, funny enough, the conversation today uh, is the anatomy and the makeup of a ghost. Of a spirit. What makes the spirits tick, as it were? And you learn all about the parts of, like, the soul and the generated ectoplasm and the haunting effect. And kind of down to a science, or pseudoscience, as some might say, non-professionals, uh, about what really, why a, a spirit does the way it does. You learn about passive spirits and active ones that one would call poltergeist, and ones of rage that would be considered revenants. The uh, teacher, good old, as I go to my teacher list, as I go to my, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Professor Watson, uh, kind of explains them with a calm and friendly manner. It, it's, it's weird, because it's, it's like a very dark subject but he's like yeah yeah and like you know people that have had pretty bad traumatic deaths will become uh, revenant and they are fueled by their hatred and their anger in order to get revenge on the the people but you know even if they complete their cycle per se they don't actually go to peace there's no peace for something that takes vengeance because peace is really a concept that we just invested to make ourselves feel better and he tends to go off on tangents as a uh, golems tend to do how, how I is... will raise a hand. So, just humans? Or do you get, like, dog revenants? Ah, great like, question. revenants, does that happen? Great question, Melody. If we were on a house-based system with points, I would give you some bonus points for that. But seeing as we're not, I'll just have to settle for answering your question and maybe giving you a little bit of extra credit on the next test. So... Funny thing enough, most animals don't have a strong enough will or kind of soul to exhume becoming a spirit. However, there are things as hellhounds. Um, notably enough, they're actually not dogs from hell. Rather, they're spirits churned up from vengeful animals, uh, mainly dogs who are have a fierce loyalty to their owners in a past life or to one another. So... Typically, the only emotion that animals tend to exhibit very strongly on a level to become a ghost is that of anger and protection. Interesting. That's not the same. How does one acquire a hellhound? Ah, well, you know, there are rituals. Spell bindings you would need to 
particularly strong binder. Practicing. Oh. Yes, Professor, um, how do you spot a ghost and know if they are a revenant or not? Like, well, are there certain signs or things that you can look out for? Well, of course, they're mannerisms. I mean, if the revenant, if the ghost is trying to kill you, it is most certainly a revenant. If it's attempting to throw stuff at you or maybe just play around, uh, it's most likely a poltergeist. If it doesn't seem to acknowledge your existence at all, it's probably a passive haunting. I mean... Um, is there a way to prevent a haunting? Oh, I'm sure you've been you've been playing a, a, a bit too much of what's that game called uh, Phasmophobia too much. It's 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 not as easy as one would think. You can't simply toss a cross onto a ground and say ghost be gone. Now, wouldn't that be a Yes, but be... there's the traditional things like putting, you know, like the folklore, like putting salt beside your bed would prevent a ghost from entering or something like that. Does that even work or Uh sometimes in some matters. Funny thing enough and uh, Professor Watson kind of like gets up from his desk and looks at everyone uh, very intently. The One of the biggest rules we need to imagine in the realm of this supernal possibilities is this. With enough belief anything is possible. If enough people believe in something it will happen. believe so if you believe salt will stop a ghost and you believe hard enough sure there maybe is a truth to it but it's really hard to kind of decipher that belief but that's a question for uh high level philosophy that which i am uh not a teacher of hmm. take that down that, that down that'll be on the quest that's the not, that'll be on the test uh, this is not a philosophy class that'll be one of the questions True or false? Whether or not this is a philosophy class. Yes. That'll be on the test? Of course. True or false? This is a philosophy class. And honestly, if it were a philosophy class, it still might be a false. I'm confused. Exactly. Oh, and, why? Um, and now you understand philosophy. <laughs> oh, good. So I passed. Exactly. You didn't even need to take the class anymore. I'm kind of like at that point, the bell rings. <sighs> and uh, everyone is. Uh, <laughs> Professor Watson's like, all right, class, that's all we have time for today. Uh, enjoy your next classes. And remember, we'll be learning uh, more about ghosts and other uh, spiritual things tomorrow. Remember, take those notes and make sure to get me that essay by the end of the week on. You know, your personal dealings with the spiritual. Come on. Even if you don't have it, you can make something up by class. And kind of as it's happening, you see uh, Melody. Um, someone actually kind of come up, comes up to you. And is like, uh, it looks to be, it's it's uh, Mercutio. Mercutio is oh. And he comes up, he's like, that was an interesting class. Yes. It was. Do your kind often deal with the spirits a lot? I don't know if they work differently in your lands. A little. But not so much ghosts. More... Well, spirits, yes, but not not ghosts. That seems very um very different. It's mis yeah, it's very mysterious. Kind of interesting though. Makes your mind tick, you know. It does. And what about you? Are there vampiric ghosts that happen? A vampire that is a ghost is no longer a vampire. So no, I don't. I if there are, I have not uh, ever come across one, and I would dare say that would probably be a uh, a horrifying sight. Hmm. 
to say the least. Sounds exhausting. Oh, well, most things in life are. Speaking of exhausting, are you coming to the skirmish game uh, later in this week? It's the last one before the winter break. The last one? Hmm. Well, if I have a good enough reason, then I will. Well, you didn't hear this from me, but... I heard that the athletes are going up to uh, people they're interested in and asking them to uh, wear their numbers at the game. A part of good luck. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe uh, something to consider. I'm sure being one of the new girls, that's mm -hmm. sort of a a sought-after uh, prize, I should say. And will you be playing in this skirmish? Oh, of course. I'm not the greatest at it, but... You know. It's what happens when you're not born as uh, beefed up as a demon or a minotaur, or even a werewolf. Well, you have your own set of skills, surely. Oh, that I do know. Well, maybe someone will ask you in the coming days to wear their number. Maybe. If I'm very, very lucky. Oh, I don't think. I think it would be lucky to whoever would ask you if you were to accept. But uh, I have to get to my next class. Goodbye, Melody. Okay. Goodbye, Mercutio. And he just uh, kind of walks out with the hands in his pocket. Um, I have a quick side question. Yes, Isaac. What is your side question? Uh, do they teach the same subject, or is it different depending on what time it is? Like uh, the same professor teaching through the same thing, or is it just depending on what? No, no, time it's, it's the same thing. Okay. So no, Isaac couldn't like send people off to different classes. No, I was wondering if we were learning all the same stuff, or if it was like depending on your class period, if it was different. Yeah, because some people don't take the same classes, but yeah, the same. It's it's essentially the same. There's some like different, but it's the same professor. So it's it's a small school. Okay. Small university. Uh, Ivy. So kind of as, as you're walking out, uh, you don't get talked to. But you get a very, very weird feeling that someone someone is watching you. Oh my god, it might be a ghost. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I've been told that I'm being pretty low. So uh, hopefully everyone can hear me a little bit better. I will try to speak louder. I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe it's a ghost. Who knows? Actually, you do know. As you can kind of, like, you turn your head. And you see... Victoria Swan. Kind of towards the back. One of the last people to leave. Eyeing you down. Why would the... Actor? Actress? A famous person i me down oh my god i'm gonna rush to my next class before i attract any more bad luck i don't want this to be a scene in mean girls <laughs> so as you uh we're we as we kind of close around to arden arden the 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 bell rings and yeah you're you're kind of you feel rested you feel interesting uh it, it rings just as uh, Reese uh, breaks one of the tables, forcing uh, Tyler through. And there's you kind of hear uh, like hooting and hollering as one of the teachers begins yelling at both of them. And Tyler just being like, "This, yo, bro, this is bullshit. Every fucking time. You're cheating or something. You gotta stop using hell power. It's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Dude, you're, you're, you're a fucking jack minotaur get your head out of the maze or whatever jesus <laughs> and they he goes 
He's like, just because you're my brother doesn't mean I won't slap the shit out of you. And they just kind of begin exchanging words like that. <laughs> uh, Arden will note that there's some discord between the brothers and head off to class to make sure they can get a good seat. Now, before everyone gets to the next class, uh, which is the class, the big class, I should say, um, does does anyone want to do anything between periods? How much time is there between periods? Uh, about like 10 minutes. Did I get any pings off my phone? Oh, no. You want to go with me or me? I'll go. I'm already... <laughs> I mean, uh, do, I have any, do I have any pings or anything of uh, my phone? Or anybody texting or emailing? No, you anything? have the same message that you did before. All right. So I'll keep that in mind. I'm going to... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Melody will drop into the library and see if there are any books on ghosts and or books on hellhounds and what ritual you might need to bring one into existence. Okay. The Oh, Ivy, what were you saying? Just so I can have her, everyone's cue to come down. I'm going to the vending machine and grab myself a snack because I didn't get or get to eat breakfast. Yeah, because someone here... <laughs> decided i was like hey everyone you could take five out of six classes because you're not gonna have any food <laughs> and uh ivy was immediately like what is lunch what is food i don't eat that <laughs> um yeah you I go to the vending machine. The food. <laughs> you go to the vending machine uh that's that's easy enough um melody as you kind of step in uh the most of the faculty does like double roles here and you enter into the library which is this uh, straight, even though this, this academy is only about, like, 20 or 30 years old, per se, um, it looks straight out of, like, some old Victorian era, like, uh, house or building, almost like, it has been transplanted here, uh, from some way, maybe it was taken and then, like, rebuilt here, you're, you're not entirely sure the logistics of it, uh, but it's just has that old smell to it, it feels ancient, um, it has all the kind of pros and cons. The pros being that it's very beautiful in here. Um, the cons being that the cold, it's not very well insulated. So it seems to just kind of seep in at places. And for someone like you, that might be, that might be an issue. You know, it's, hmm. it's cold. It's dull. The books I... don't talk. Um, oh, the trees. You looking for something in particular or just staring at leather? Wow. Uh, and I think Neil walks um, behind Melody, recognizing them. I'm looking for information on ghosts and hellhounds. G ghosts? <laughs> Why would you want information on ghosts? You haunted? I don't know. Maybe. Are you? <laughs> I feel like if I were haunted, I'd probably know about it. Seems like someone would, you know. People don't live a second time for no reason. Well, maybe. Maybe it's about finding one and asking what the second reason is. Oh, good luck. This uh, this place is only 10 years old. How could it have a ghost? Y you want to walk well, to occult studies? Sorry. Well, I was just looking for uh, a book, actually. And kind of when you say, uh, how can this place have a ghost? Uh, you hear someone call out as Professor Gray, uh, Professor Astoria Gray, she steps out. Very easily, actually. You see... It's not the buildings that would be haunted, but rather the land itself. Uh, she is very well dressed uh, to the nines of that professional kind of like businesswoman look. Uh, her hair in a tight bun, and she kind of like runs one of her like slender long fingers across the counter, uh, her nails scratching and almost making like this irritating noise as she does so. <laughs> uh, 
the land, huh? <laughs> I mean, this was a logging town, wasn't it? Lumberjack? Oh, no. well, yes, but there was a carnival. So well, it hasn't just been a school, and it hasn't just been a logging town. A, car a carnival. <laughs> One of those yes. kooky things with the freak shows. I'm going to, um, so I have a move called Unresolved, Unresolved Trauma. Trauma. Yep. <laughs> when something brings to mind your death, you choke up and gain the condition traumatized, if I don't have it already. Whenever someone helps you resolve this condition, you both mark experience. For now, there is, um, there is no one to help, so... <laughs> I'm just going to mark it. This is great. I wanted this to happen. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Uh, and Neil, you, like? you, you, you visibly probably like shake up and you almost see a, a smile on Professor Gray's face. Yes. A, a carnival, though I find the phrase freak show to be barbaric. Ah, uh, well, you know, old-timey language. You know, they were the first of our kind. The what? first safe havens for people that were like you or me, usually. In fact, their inception, their concept, we probably owe a lot to over the years. Except it wasn't like that, was it? Because this was what, what carnivals came to fashion in the twenties, and people not a single soul trusted anyone who was a part of one. A bit of a different story than just you know a school full of classes and safety. There's no such thing as safety when you're poor and desperate, and literally everyone thinks you're out to get them. Yes, the only safety we have is numbers and. Unfortunately, now we have protections and wards and charms and all manner of geographical isolation, and we have connections and money and wealth and power. But bear in mind, as much as this place is a haven for us, it is also our prison. And that is a true fact that I do not speak lightly. Some yeah. of us can definitely leave. I, uh... Hate to break this up, but I really should get to class. I don't want to be late again. Excuse me. Of course. And rush off. And Melody, we could talk about your request a little bit later. Perhaps when the classes are done. Okay. And if you do, will you bring uh, Mr. Fernandez with you? He has a book he was looking for that I found. Do I have to? You don't have to do anything, okay. but probably be to your interest. Oh. Now, now, I see that look on your face. Don't expect me to give you every secret. Just come back to class. Just come back after class with him. I'm excited. Sh she's gone. <laughs> And everyone's kind of on the, the way to class. Uh, Arden, something something that you notice as you're kind of wandering through the halls, um, and it, it's something specifically that only that you've been able to kind of pick up and ping, is there's almost like a sort of living architecture to this place. Not necessarily like that it moves per se or even like functions as a as a being, but you you get the idea that there is breathing. Like the walls are breathing, like the building is breathing. And even on occasion you can hear the soft thrum of it of the Academy's heartbeat. You're not sure why you've brought this up to a few people, probably. Or maybe you've kept it a secret to yourself. But if you were to have brought it up to a few people, uh, they would tell you that they don't know what you're talking about. And nothing has been documented like this uh, or explained in any textbook that they've read. Yeah, I think that I sort of, as I'm walking to class, run my hand along the walls. Um... I don't quite understand what's going on with the school, but if I can be on its good side, then 
I might as well do my best to do that. Yes. Getting on the Academy's good side. Probably for the best of it. It's no cost to me, so why not? In fact, that knowledge might be currency in itself. For the right party. And for the right price. <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, kind of as you're walking back, uh, Arden, you also uh, almost bump into the Dean himself. Uh, Dean Said, as people will call him. He easily sidesteps you with a sort of quick agility you would not expect out of a man who is probably in his 50s. And he goes, Harden. Dean? Up to, hopefully, your classes, are we? Of course. What else would I be doing here? Splendid. You are one of our brightest students. I appreciate that you think so. And he kind of nods and he continues walking. Uh, you don't know why, but the professor always gives you two feelings. Or the dean always gives you two feelings. It gives you the feeling of familiarity. But it also gives you the feeling of like uncomfortability or even on the verge of horror. Really reminds me too much of home. Um... Yes. Home lives. Everyone, some people have some bad home lives, you know? That's that's the, the common case for most of our people at the school. Ivy, have you uh have you messaged your parents since you've been here? Uh yeah. I they did ask me if how how I am handling school and I did tell them vague stuff. I can't really tell them that the school that they sent me is apparently a monster school. Because yeah. I don't want them to worry. And you kind of feel like every time you attempt to even maybe do so, the, the text fails or maybe you reconsider. You're not sure why, but it always seems to be something. Yeah. Have you been in contact with your grandmother? No. Um, None of my other family members have contacted me after... The family reunion. Only my mom and dad nowadays. Yeah, that that isolation feels tough, probably. Especially when you're all alone at a school like this. Yeah, it's new school, new cultures, otherworldly cultures that I have to adjust to. But I believe that I can do this, so... Just need to take time, hopefully. And as you're walking to class, uh, someone walks up beside you as you see uh, Kaya kind of looking at you and smiling. Hey, Ivy, how are you doing today? Hi. Um, She's carrying a kind of munching. in her hands. Yeah, I I'm doing fine. Um, Just one second. I haven't <laughs> eaten breakfast, so <laughs> <laughs> she kind of giggles. She's like, "Oh, you, oh yeah, you skipped it again." God, you're you're always waking up late. Yeah, for some reason, like a lot of things in my room keeps on failing. Like the charging, the the outlet is failing. My phone won't charge. It's always cold. I think the air conditioning is broken. I don't know. Yoni doesn't really think there's something's wrong with it, but oh, I'm always cold. Well, I mean, for, you know what, Yoni doesn't really understand technology that well. Yeah. I mean, they're they're good for other things. But, yeah. Uh, normal societal and civility, not. I mean, he, you, you think he would, like, wake you up 
Well, I guess maybe that's crossing boundaries. I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly, that's still the weirdest like miss. miss she's kind of like she gestures a lot with her hands. That's kind of the weirdest mismatch I've ever seen. Like, so I gotta, I gotta ask, how is it rooming with, you know, one of them? I'm not really sure what you want me to say. I guess it's like having a normal roommate. Really? They're not like, you know? they're not like odd or, you know, they don't do weird rituals before they go to sleep or. I mean, everyone has their own weird rituals and everyone can be odd. I've had an old roommate who likes to drink a lot of Coke, like two liters of Coke before sleeping. And I don't understand how they can sleep. Okay, but, like, having an addiction to caffeine is one thing. Being from another, like, realm is kind of something else. Um, I never really noticed any of that stuff. Well, aside from the first day where he... I woke up and then he was just staring at me. That was kind of creepy. But I guess he's just curious. I'm surprised in a room. You know, both of them together. You know, Melody and Mion, Yone. Maybe, you know, it's not of it's none of our business. And am, maybe am being, they don't like each Am I being, like, specious? Am I being racist? Right. No. I... You know uh, what? Yeah. I, I'm gonna You're sign You're stereotyping this. them, maybe. Okay, look. I... Okay, you know what? Yeah, bad move on my part. I, I'm... We're gonna forget that I had this conversation. Um, We're not gonna mention to the Faye. I mean... To Yoni and Melody that we talked about this, and yeah, we'll just uh um we'll just forget it. I hope yeah. I'm glad you're having a good roommate. Yeah, he keeps to himself a lot, so this is that's great. Except for the part where he doesn't really wake me up and you know everything else, but that's just me. Although if we do it, I will hex the shit out of him. I swear to God. Please. Please don't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking play. I, I don't play at all. I swear. I'm your friend, and I told you. I made you an oath that I'd help you out. And you should know. Yeah, and you're promise, always so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, and promises go a long way here. So. Or so I say. Yeah, thank you. You're such a great friend. All right, I'll see you later. I might be late on my next class again. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, you kind of all get into uh, class. And I think being an hour in, um, I think this is a great chance before we kind of start what is most likely going to be the biggest clusterfuck of this episode. Uh, let's go to a quick five minute break and then we'll get back to second period where we will see what goes on in occult studies class. Hold off. We'll be back in just a few
Hello everyone, and welcome back to Gehenna Academy, Episode 1, From the Gallows. We hope you enjoyed your little five minute break, and we, we're go I'm going to drop the content warning once more for violence, gore, psychological horror, drama, sexual content. Keep it noted. Thank you to everyone that keeps watching. Let's jump right back into the show. So, occult studies. What can I say about occult studies? Uh, well, it's held in a small classroom. Uh, that's towards the basement area. Um, it's dark, doesn't have windows. Light doesn't really escape from it. And it's got somewhat of a pungent smell to it. But you've heard that the teacher, a Professor Astoria Gray, uh, prefers it that way. Tell me, who is the first to enter into the classroom? Is everyone kind of hodgepodging at once? Uh, I don't have a class beforehand, so probably me. Ooh. So is Isaac just walking in and seeing Arden kind of like sitting there and going like... Pretty much, yeah, because I think everybody else is... They are busy, and then she's l probably late, so yeah, I'm probably second. I mean, Neil, Neil also might get there first. He can literally... That's true. <laughs> uh... I have a feeling like Neil, despite the fact he technically rushed off to his next class, isn't going to be, is probably going to be the last person to enter. You know, just before the bell rings, sitting far in the back as possible. Kind of just fading into view almost. Mm -hmm. I think there's one point where he literally reaches for the handle of the, of the door and he can't move it. Is that shaken? So yeah, everyone enters into the class. I'm late as always. I think so. I think that means Ivy is the one who opens the door for Neil. <laughs> just struggling with the door, and Ivy shows up. You just feel uh, Ivy. You feel like a cold giraffe just pass over you. Ooh, oh my god! Really need a thicker jacket. I just open the door. Uh, I was checking my phone. He does not have a phone. Not in his hand, at least. Um, oh. how are you doing? I'm doing great. I think we really should go and kneel. It, we're going to be, we're, I don't think the professor is going to be happy with us. Well, you know, she's a, she's a bit like that. Go ahead. Open the door. Oh, the professor isn't even in here yet. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes, all right. She was in the library last I saw her. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Um, I walk in, see Isaac. I immediately go to the opposite direction and find a seat as far away from him as possible. I also immediately look in the other direction of wherever she's going. Uh, Arden waves you over and has saved you a seat, uh, sort of like one row ahead, like, diagonal from them so they can creepily stare at you and pretend they're looking at the teacher. <laughs> uh, in this class as well are uh, uh, the Ackerman brothers, Yanni, oh. Hannah, Lucas, um, Jay, Jaime, and Nikki. Also, Samir. Who seems to also sit in the back, uh, seeing as he doesn't really need to, or they don't really need to uh, look at the chalkboard, or they just need to listen. Samir's kind of just seems to be the calmest of everyone. He doesn't talk, he just kind of writes in his book and uh, drinks his, his water. Um,. I walk over, over to them. Is the, is the seat taken? I mean, is someone else? Are you waiting for someone to... Are you... No, sit. 
please. <clears throat> Sorry. We had a little bit of a nervous interaction earlier, and I'm not my best self. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, is it if it's important to you, we can talk about it. I mean, uh, I don't want to bother you. No, I mean, why would you be bothering me? Is is it not like one of our main duties as a person to help one another? I just. I was reminded of something pretty awful. Um, it's funny. I almost consider this a safe space, you know, but the more I'm here, the more I feel like I'm not being myself. And more importantly, the more I feel like people are, are trying to get me for a reason I can't understand. I get it. Or, Maybe I not get it. I am like I can emphasize with that, and I mean, it's hard to really consider what a safe space is anymore. Is any place truly safe? But I think there is something to say that the people here, even though they don't understand you, they get it to a certain extent. And they won't judge. They could still be assholes and dicks or nice people to you, but they won't judge. You don't know that? I don't. But I can hope for that. <laughs> you don't even know who I am. Well, we can fix that. And he, um, or they, uh, extend their arm, their hand. Uh, funny enough, like, you've heard, or you, you can see that Samir is blind. But he seems to kind of instinct instinctually know where you are. I, uh, I definitely hesitate. Because... There's something just wrong about that, you know? But this is the kindest anyone's treated me in a while. So after like a moment's hesitation, I uh, I clasp Neil's hand back. And crucially, I think, instead of feeling cold to Samir, I feel warm, almost burning hot. Are you perhaps rolling to turn some on turn someone on or is this is this something more esoteric i f i feel like this is something a bit more esoteric i feel like the fact that neil comes across as cold has less to do with the fact that he's a ghost and more the fact to do with how he feels in a certain situation neil would you please roll me 2d6 plus dark to gaze into the abyss? I will happily do so. Uh, so that is a 7 plus my dark, which is a plus 1. That is an 8. As you sit there and your skin touches and you feel electricity almost dance across it from the kind of nerve endings which don't technically exist in your hand you feel this rush um just for a second everything is is dark everything is nothing it maybe this is what true oblivion is but then you see someone. You see someone here in the oblivion. Neil, I'm going to give you a choice. Mm -hmm. Out of our main cast, who do you say?
I think I see Melody. You see Melody, but you don't actually see that version of Melody. Uh, in fact, it looks like a drawing, a crudely drawn sketch of, of white against the Oblivion. And her sketch, they kind of just dance in the moment. And you can see everywhere they step, plants and mushrooms uh, seem to spawn from their presence. But then you see the academy or a crudely drawn version of the academy and melody steps upon the grounds and nothing seems to grow nothing at all and melody is her caricature is kind of consumed by the sadness and for a second you see the towering visage of a tree. Its leaves are dead, its branches gnarling and turned upon each other, looking more like a oversized thorn bush than anything. And you see Melody throw herself upon the tree, the branches piercing her body. I yell out, stop, and I reach out with one hand. And as you do so, no matter how close you get, how hard you try, the only thing you can feel is deep-rooted sorrow. And it fucking sucks, and you hate it. And you feel like you need to just scream. Do you scream? I am going to resist that urge as much as possible. Gain a string on Melody. And Alrighty. the visage is ripped away from you like a cloth over your head. And you're talking to Sumira once more. Who lets go of his hand looks down at it and then back up to you his eyes not really focusing on anything but the direction like he's almost like uh there he's looking through you they're looking <laughs> through you well <laughs> it's, it's nice to meet you S smear so, so, so sorry not supposed to happen. It's I, okay. You you see, I I'm what they they call uh. Sort when I use my power, I kind of get like the um. I I'm what they call an an, an oracle. And I didn't think I could. Ever show someone else what I see? <laughs> Who are you? I'm a. I'm just a regular old dude, you know. Just a guy. You know, I know it seems kind of off the cob, but uh, do you want to uh, maybe um? like study together sometime with, with me no no with with sally henson yeah with you i i'm i'm not gonna lie i uh i've never really been put in this uh, situation before no, no i'm what am i um, what am i saying yeah yeah yeah, that would, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down for that, and apparently so is my lighting. Uh. <laughs> well, right here. Well, uh, maybe not right now, considering I have a feeling this is going to walk in and 
Any second. She kind of freaks me out. No, she she freaks me out too. It's it's fine. And yeah, um, a oh, really quick before we get to Professor Gray walking in, uh, is there anything Melody or Isaac or Ivy or Arden? I don't know if you finished your conversation. I would, I would I would say for me before class starts, uh, I would kind of real quick rip a piece of paper from my notebook and write uh, meet me at the library at five thirty. Fold it, and then pass it to Yoni. And then also uh, go to Brooke and tell her to DM Kaya for me with the same information to meet me at the library at five thirty. Uh, Brooke goes at once and uh, you pass the note along to you. So wait, you pass the note directly to Yoni? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yoni kind of like gives you a blank like stare and checks. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what, what, what is this? What are, you, what are you giving me right here? You know, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Read what are you, it. What, are you talking about? What, what is this? Read it. And meet me there. And I just walk away. Okay, secret meeting, secret meeting. Got it. I got it. We get to go to a secret meeting. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Let's, let's go to a secret meeting. Yeah, yeah. You only totally, totally. Prep. Yeah, this is not gonna end badly at all. Cool, great, amazing. How how would I ever? Yeah. Oh, Isaac's gone. Oh, he's he's gone, and I'm just talking to myself. Kind Again. of tap Yoni. So sorry, okay. Ivy, 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 Ivy. How 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 are you doing today? I didn't see you today. Oh, it's because I left. I always leave before you sleep before you wake up. I'm yeah. sorry. I should probably wake you up. Why did I not wake you up? I didn't think about it. Oh, well, don't worry about it. That's fine. Every every teacher is already used to me being late anyway. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I. I always am like this. Why, why would it not be okay? Maybe do you, do you not perceive me as okay? Is there an issue here that we maybe need to address? Are you okay? Is the question I should be asking. Are you alright? Everybody right? really okay. Oh, you've been talking to Samir again, haven't you? That's the kind of stuff that he likes to say. Yeah, like and the first say? class was being weird. There was like the philosophy and belief and nothing really about ghosts and belief and what does belief even mean Ooh, you see i can teach you a lot about belief they tell me a lot about belief come on you never consumed human media before i mean you are immortal i mean you do come from that realm you know you are not yeah. really like one of us this is just kind of one of the things we like to do i mean you've never watched peter pan you know you gotta believe in if you don't believe in the fae the fae don't get to be exist that's that's apparently one of our weaknesses, but who knows? Okay, Yoni, hey, I'll, I'll see you. I, I, have a, I have a cool idea, a cool thought. You could gather friends, we could all gather friends. And we could think about this, consider it for a moment. We could smoke some dream grass. I don't think the prof. I don't think that's legal. What about it, I, Ivy? You don't want to smoke the green grass, the dream grass. I don't think it's legal, Yone. That's um. I want to get in trouble. I'm already in trouble what for being late. What do you mean late. legal? It's an I, other planar substance. There is no laws against it. Well, don't you know about that? That's something we learned in cold I, studies. Um, I. I don't really have the free time to do that. You know that I have part time oh, classes. Oh, after. oh, time. And he kind of gets like to a low voice. Time passes much differently over there. Okay, Yoni, you are creeping me out, oh, and cool. I'm I am sorry. going to my seat. Enjoy. You. Yeah. Have a good one. I'll talk well, to you later. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Yeah. All right. Wow. Bye, Ivy. Talk to you later. Have a good one. I'll see you back at school. Uh, can you burn yeah. me that next tape? And he just keeps rambling on and on. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Just saying that as I walk to my seat, which is probably as far away from Isaac, and then... Um... So I assume Isaac is at the back of the room. Me Melody, you caught all of that. I'm just going to say you caught all of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I caught all of that. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm going to... But I'm distracted by something else. So I'm going to go... And, well, I mean, I heard it all. And I'll, as I go past Ivy, I'll just say, Dream grass is quite fun, you should. And then stop over at Isaac's desk. Just lean on the desk. Personal space, that is a thing that exists on the mortal plane. You do know that, right? I don't see the boundary. Where is it? Uh, it's It's right. Like where the desk starts, you Is know. There a veil? Okay, what do you want? Do you just, just get to Isaac, it. Isaac, roll me another fucking shut someone down. God damn it! <laughs> oh jeez. Ooh, that's gonna be a twelve. Ooh. Ooh, all right. Uh, you just choose from from below, and no, there's no repercussions. All right. Uh. He does, or I do. Oh no, I do. He he gets to choose one. He give you a condition, or he can give you one of the. Uh, do you have a string on Isaac Melody? I don't think she uh, does. I, I yeah. do not. Uh, so you can take a string, they, or they can gain a condition, or you or uh, you can take one forward against Melody. I'm gonna take one forward against Melody. I think oh. I'm gonna need it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Cool. So you get a plus oh, one bonus boy. on your next roll towards Melody. God. Amazing. Simply awesome. And I'm just like right, just right there. Just don't. It's like um, a border. Just don't come over. And as you do so, uh, Marshall steps. Actually, no. Marshall doesn't step in front of you. He would if he wasn't kind of making like weird stares over at Arden. Do you keep missing? He's it's Elliot, and he's my Arden, Marshall. It's, oh, it's yeah. L. Oh my God. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, who's Marshall? Oh, because it's his enforcer, then Marshall Elliot Parker. Okay, I thought that was a cool yeah. name. Yeah, it's Elliot. another word for yeah. It's yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't read that. So yeah, no Elliot, Elliot does not step in front of you. It's uh, Elliot is looking over at Arden. <sighs> I just thought you'd like to know that we have a secret tryst later in the library. My schedule is a little bit busy, so is there a time for this, or? Whenever you're ready. I just thought I'd let you know. Thanks. Now, again, you're in the space, so could you, like, back up just like... I said you might want something there. My Demeter kind of shows from like, you're annoying to. And exactly how did you come by this information? Oh, so you're interested now. When, when you get into my fucking business, then I become very interested. So. Oh, well. I suppose you'll find out later then. She walks off and takes a seat near Ivy. I just. I just put my glasses to my just just go about my day. Um, and that as you do, Isaac, uh, Brooke kind of looks over at you and goes, "You know, I've been I've been trying to keep tabs on that one, but she is very evasive. We're gonna have to get more creative. We'll discuss that later. Do you think?" Do you think that uh, Professor Gray found it? I hope she did. But the thing is, why would she tell them of all people? That makes no sense. Because Professor Gray is a fucking bit. And then before <laughs> she can finish the sentence, uh, Perf uh, Soria Gray walks in. All right, class, I know I'm a little bit late, but I'm the teacher, so I make the rules around here. Everyone take their seats and we can get right into the lessons. Um, and she proceeds to give you a very, very interesting uh, lecture. 
on uh on a topic that might be uh, a little dramatic but but she says it with such cold efficiency that it sounds probably a lot more horrifying than it should um but even more so because she doesn't react when she tells she doesn't lack any of the details for you uh she tells you about the spanish inquisition specifically and how that the spanish inquisition uh, was also a double front and hunt in ruining out supernaturals like yourselves and she goes in and explains the multiple ways of detecting of hunting of torture that they would uh, mm -hmm. to root out supernaturals such as yourself including one particular gruesome one involving metal stakes which were driven through the hands the feet and even the neck in ways that would not kill the person immediately instead forcing them to hang upside down uh, while their blood would be drawn and collected over the course of several days even and the doing so would be uh, amazing alchemical practices you see for as much against heresy as the Inquisition was. They were all practitioners themselves. All students of Plato, all understanders of the cave and symposium, understanding alchemy and the great restoration. You know, at the end of the day, mortals are just they're greedy and they're Hypocrites. Uh, it's a downer of a lesson. To say the least. Um, and as she speaks, something that Gr Astoria Gray does to you. And you're not sure if it's because... Um, what the rumor is... Is that she's a very, very well-skilled witch. Uh, but the fact that the color and the life force almost begins to drain out of the classroom um, not in like a dangerous way per se but like you can't take your eyes off her you can't stop listening um, you feel even if you wanted to how do you all feel about this I don't I don't like that at all. <laughs> I think I would like to keep my cool. Amazing. That's such a good idea. Go ahead yeah, and roll uh with cold, Neil. Wow, no failures this game. Surprise, surprise. I would I would also like to try to keep my cool. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could tell you that I failed, but instead I got a 10. <laughs> <laughs> I expect to fail. This is going to be fun. I don't see anything weird about this since I always listen to my professors regardless of what they're saying anyway. Yep. I got a 5. Oh, interesting. Amazing. Splendid. Yeah. Exploratory. And a thousand other things that Yoni, that Yoni is screaming at the at this point in time. Um, so we're going to go with success first because, mm -hmm. uh, that's the way I want to do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm Professor Astoria Gray and I make the fucking <laughs> rules here. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, Neil. So on a 10, you keep your cool and you gain insight. You can ask me a single question and you can take plus one forward on one forward on acting on that. And I swear to you, I will tell you the truth. Or the apparent truth. Or I won't lie. Why would I lie? Yeah, why would you lie? Uh yeah. okay, so here's the question. Is a story gray really describing all of this in great detail as an education, or is there an ulterior motive? Is she trying to bring out a certain emotion in her students? So it's educa it's it's education, but it's it's definitely like almost an archaic way of education. It's education through fear. You get the feeling, like 
when you tell someone they can't, they should never smoke marijuana because it'll lead to them uh, eventually taking meth and dying somewhere on a road, or where you tell them not to have sex or you'll die if before you're married. It's it's not lies per se. You can looking at it, you're you're sure that they did some them some things like that, and you and you know by looking at your textbook that they collected the blood of supernaturals as well because they're powerful alchemical bonds that were used in ritual spells magic uh even you know some apocryphes would have claimed to have such ingredients but you do think that uh, that professor gray is doing so in order to uh spook you per se or whether she's trying to reprimand you on the real dangers of the mortals or not though that's kind of up in your decision yeah Ooh. june grass is a gateway to come again <laughs> i'm going to look his story in the eye and i think his conversation with samir is really like calm down that initial shock of, of being traumatized i don't know if it cleared it I, I want to think about that but it definitely is not as effective as it was in the brief conversation he had with the story before so instead, he's going to stand. Uh, he's going to like straighten himself up in his chair, look a story in the eye, and say, "Is the, all this fear mongering really necessary, or should we focus more on prevention of that kind of hunting?" Because frankly, that's what I'd like to learn about. And I feel like I'm shutting her, trying to shut her down. <laughs> okay, you're gonna shut down uh, a teacher. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's gonna work out well. I'm gonna say you're like gonna this... you're gonna take a negative one to that role because you're kind of. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna invent a rule right now because this is a rule I like in other games. I want to do here. We're gonna roll with disadvantage, which in other Power of the Apocalypse systems means you roll three dice and you take the two lowest. Alrighty. And I'll be so I... house rules. Alrighty. So I rolled a two, a four, and a three. Now I think this is. I am taking what uh, I'm taking the response from earlier and going forward with it. So I do get plus one forward awesome uh the two and the four are the uh the two and the three are the lowest plus one forward on top of that makes that a six and i have plus two to cold because ghosts are cold as shit so i get the seven to nine result uh i get a condition in return mm -hmm. um but i will take a string on astoria gray awesome but she indeed does not have strings on you. Nope. All right. Uh, and she's going to give you condition. Um, as she kind of like leans in, she's like, I mean, you know, I just, I hope my story isn't making you feel uneasy, is it? And you're gonna take uneasy as a condition. Okay. And uh, she kind of straightens herself out and kind of gets out of that like storytelling mode. But in all seriousness, I am telling you this uh, partially to scare you, but partially to make sure you understand the tragedy that people such as us have faced in the past, and how even today we still can't escape that tragedy, unfortunately. Preventage is largely through education. I mean, unless you want to start learning how to fight mortal hunters, but that is for magical partitioning class and gym, I would say. Uh, this is occult studies. And, and as anyone here could probably know, educating a large, educating one person is easy. Educating the massives, almost impossible. To accept, uh, accept something that's different from them. Surely. We all know that. But yes. Maybe. Mr. Kapoor is right. And I. Shall move on. More. And I'll make the language a little less. 
flowery and uh, over-oriented for all of you. And she kind of gives this uh, bittersweet smile that you almost feel like, all right, what the what the fuck is that? Uh, and she, you kind of take your seat, and she kind of like goes off into another lecture. And uh, class passes. You did, know, can oh. I ask? Did did that break Melody out of that interaction? Oh yeah, you know that definitely kind of warmed the room up a bit. Oh. Okay, quick. And don't worry, I did not forget about your failure. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm just banking it for later. Oh, thanks. No Great. problem. It's what I'm here for. It's interesting that way. Yay. Uh, so class does indeed end, unless there's something else that anyone would like to ask during the lecture, or do something specifically they want to do during the lecture. All right. Then we will continue. Um, As the... The period, the class, uh, comes down to an end. Bell rings. And I believe that actually is going to take us into lunchtime. Uh, for people that are able to grab it. As, uh, as soon as the bell rings... Dr. Gray just is, or not yet, uh, Professor Gray is kind of like, we'll continue tomorrow, have a pleasant day, and your assignment for the day is to do something fun. And she kind of does that, like, you know that finger wave? That, like, is always so annoying and is in incessant. Yeah, that, like, sometimes it's sweet, like when you three do it, that's that was sweet. Uh, when anyone ever does it to me, it's like, get the fuck out of here, or I know exactly, like, I'll, I'll be seeing you later. Uh, so yeah, that's what happens. And kind of everyone's kind of going out, and... Do something fun. <laughs> uh, Lucas specifically kind of, like, uh, comes up to you, Isaac, and goes... Hey man, I uh, I got the stuff you were asking for before. Good man. It's not. It's not cheap. It's gonna be fifty a gram. Can I afford that? I highly doubt it. But I mean, you're a college kid and you're the queen. Yeah, you probably fucking do. Oh okay. <laughs> I thought that was gonna. I thought it was a no was coming. Uh, I just simply uh, I look over to Christina. Going, please uh, wire what he is needed on old. Yes, I'll wire it right now. And she takes she she just takes money out of her like like the breast pocket and then like counts it out. And it was a it. joke. You didn't have to be you know you, you could play along with it. You know it's it whatever. And she kind of like stares and looks and she's like, Lucas, this is this is undercutting what you gave us last time. Look, look, getting dream grass is tough if it's not like I getting it from yo from like good stuff is, is hard. Yoni makes it all the time. Yeah, but no, this is better than Yoni stuff. What do you get it from Melody or something? God no. 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 Better. How how short is he? Hey, you didn't hear it from me, but Kind of leans in. Let's just say there's a secret place this, this this stuff grows. Let me guess. You will tell me this place if you get more money. I mean, that's my connection. I would take a lot, lot of money for me to tell you where this place is. Well, how about you get some money? And you get to walk back to your home room or your dorm, wherever it is, without your legs being broken all of a sudden. I mean, I feel that that's another beneficial option for you. And he kind of like looks around and he kind of gets in your face. And you kind of see, like, Lucas gets a, uh, a bit bigger. 
almost. Are you threatening me? As you kind of see him, like, like, kind of, like, jagged fangs from his teeth begin to grow. Not, like, vampire fangs, but, like, every, like, t tooth. Should I keep my cool, or should I try to shut his ass down? Like, in the sense that's, of... That's up to if you. I'm standing, uh, um, keeping your cool would be, like, staying quiet and, like, trying to walk away from the situation. But if you want to go for broke... Uh, you could also try to kiss him if you really, if you want to turn him on. Or what, what do you? What does Isaac do in this situation? I'm gonna just use some of my psychonetic magic and start to pick up something as well. Going. Okay. You, you want to try me and try to shut him down? Okay. Yeah. Shut him down. Definitely. Unless you. <laughs> I got a seven. Awesome. Well, uh, what would you like to do? He does, you can take a string on him, you can give him a condition, or you can take plus one forward on, his, on your next roll against him. I'm going to give him the con uh, condition of feeling small. Ooh, I like that. That's how you play Monster Arts. Yeah, the best defense, just kiss him. Um, you know, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so you do that, and uh, he looks up and he kind of looks... Not towards the thing that's floating, but he looks towards Elliot, who, who who before was like, I'm just gonna look at Arden. But now at this point where like he hears the threats, he's kind of getting there and he's like cracking his fingers. Yeah. You would be nothing if it wasn't for your fucking four on one posse. And he kind of just barges out of the room. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you very much. Yeah, boss. That's what that's what I'm here for. And I would, if you were gonna take notes, keep your eyes next time on me instead of. Hey, hey, Arden. Hey, hey, and he's like already going off. <laughs> <I'm> exactly. <laughs> Not okay. I don't know what he sees in that girl. I don't know either. She's trouble from miles away. But then again, he that's isn't half snaring. The... Our Elliot. Yes, but for right now, let it play out. Last time I checked, we don't have much people that close, even though he may be an idiot for her. That does not mean we cannot learn anything. That one. That one's always going to be an issue, uh, Brooke says. And yeah, um. Ellie goes over to you, Arden. Hey, hey, hey Arden. Uh, yeah, how are you doing? You know? Hey, Elliot, what was that over there? Oh, no, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's uh, just business. Oh, of course. I mean, you looked really impressive, like, cracking your hands like that. Oh, yeah, oh, you know, uh, my, uh, they say if you do that too much, it's it's going to cause uh, early onset arthritis, but, you know, I don't, I don't believe that. I, that doesn't happen in my family. <laughs> Uh, Arden will, like, reach out and take one of his hands and say, Oh, I mean, I'd hate to see that happen, though. You have such lovely hands. Hey, oh. you don't have a class. <laughs> he just kind of does the... Roll to uh, turn Elliot on. As he kind of, like... He, he kind of does the thing. Like, he, he's almost standing on his tippy toes at one point. He's, like, you know, just, like... He's, you know, he's cupcaking. Oh, buddy. <laughs> uh, that is a nine minus one. So eight. Awesome. Um, so they can they're gonna give you a string choose me reaction. Um, he's gonna give you a, a string on him, so you can take another string on Elliot. Beautiful. Um, and then he's also getting embarrassed and arcing off for him. Give you that freebie as well. Aww. Uh, so I will say you don't have a class last period, do you? Uh, well, well let me check out. And he kind of looks back. Hey, 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 boss, do I have a class last period? <laughs> Yes, yes, you do. Actually, Isaac does not have a class last period. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he goes, I, I don't have a class last period, actually. W why? Uh, well, you know, Professor Gray said to do something fun. Um, and I have art class, and I could really just use a model. Would you like to come by? Oh, a, 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 a model? What I mean, you... just for me, not for the whole class. He looks there, she's like, 
this I'm not gonna be have to be like, wait, is it like one of those models? <laughs> Whatever you're comfortable with, of course. Because I don't got any, I don't got any leaves that can come <laughs> that up. I mean, I'm sure we could find something in the art room for you if that's what you wanted to do. But really, oh just no, like... no, I mean, I mean, what, what, yeah, sure, I'll be, I'll be a model. I, that's cool. Great. I'll see you at the end of the day then. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, it's a, it's a date. I mean, I mean, it's a rendezvous. Dang. Yeah. I mean, get your ass over here. Yeah, yeah, boss. I'm here. I'll, I'll, br I'll break, I'll break Lucas's knees for you. <laughs> yes, like... thank you. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> he walks. I'm going to wink at Isaac and leave the room. And I give her the middle finger. <laughs> uh, Melody Ivy, what, what are you both doing? Um, I kind of turn to since Melody's sitting near me. I kind of turn to Melody and ask like. What did the professor mean by do something fun? Like, is that a trick question? Or do we really have to do something fun and write it down and tell that to her? Or Do you not know how to do something fun? I, mm, my idea of fun is kind of just reading books in the library. So I don't know if that's fun in Miss, Miss Gray's kind of idea. Or, uh, horror? Scary oh. stories, folklores. What kind of folklore? I don't know, something about... Well, I'm new to this thing, so I usually read about, you know, ghosts and werewolves and vampires and... I could show you a thing or two. Could be fun. Yeah, sounds good. Why don't you come to the library? I mean, I have to go there with Isaac, but after that. Um, what time? Because I've got a part-time job at the cafe outside the school, and I'm not sure if... Hmm. Well, we could either go before or we could go after. I mean, we've got gym. Yeah. Between gym mm -hmm. and when your job starts? Oh yeah, yeah, that sounds good. You do you think they'll let me eat in the library though? I don't see why not. If you're quiet. Okay, I'll eat quietly. Should be fine. We can both eat quietly. Mm hmm And I will tell you all what Ivy's part-time job is. But uh, longtime fans of Gehenna Valley might just know this place when it does come up. So, uh, everyone kind of leaves for their next class. Or it's no, it'd be lunchtime. Uh, leaves for the cat. Yeah. Everyone's kind of going to get the cafeteria, and then go, you two are going to the library. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then... Melody's going to make sure that Isaac is also going to the library. Is Isaac going to the library? That's the question, indeed. Uh, do I not have to go to supernatural biology yet, or I have lunchtime? No, there's lunchtime between. Okay, said so I'm I'm going to the library, and I'm getting it done already. So I would I would go too. Neil, where's Neil going? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if Neil wants to go back to the library. I don't know. That might be uh... I I feel like I feel like yeah, Neil's happy place is the library, despite the fact you know. A lot of it is challenging for him so uh he's gonna like pick a really hefty book you know something really hard to understand and he's gonna sit there and challenge himself with it because he's not gonna go eat because he doesn't honestly it's a really huge thing about being alive that you kind of miss the eating bit anyway tolstoy Yeah, so I guess that just leaves Arden. Are you going to complete the, um, well, I guess I wouldn't call it a trifecta, it'd be like a pentafecta, and go <laughs> to the library as well, or what is Arden doing? Uh, I think I'd actually like to try and investigate the school a little. 
Ooh. Uh, so Arden, I would like to go up to my room and look in the mirror and put my hands on it. And, you know, I've done bargaining ceremonies with people before, but I've never tried it with a building. And so let's see what happens. Um, but like mechanically, I think this is probably more of a look into the void. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and um, as you're kind of like winding the ever hall everlasting hallways of Gehenna Academy, which I think this would be a great time to call to pull the camera back and let's take a look at Gehenna Academy and see its makeup. So Gehenna Academy is actually made up of three separate buildings, surprisingly enough, which kind of form this like uh, U kind of junction. So your your typical like kind of school layout that a lot of like other places like to mimic. Uh, but I'll read the setting up a while. So the surrounding area is forest. It's forest for miles. The closest town, the actual town of a uh, Gehenna Valley. Uh, a decent drive away, at least 30 minutes. Uh, Ivy somehow makes it. We don't know how Ivy gets there, but but she does. She gets she gets her part time job. Um. But you have the kind of main area, which is like the main school of academics, which is uh, the classrooms, the cafeteria, the faculty offices, the science lab, the various bits the old astronomy tower even which no there's no class currently for this semester so no one seems to really talk about it um and whatnot and all like your education classes then you have the kind of two dorms uh, which form the left and right wings of the dormitories uh, known as wing a and wing b uh but each kind of have are double for something else so your wing a uh is also kind of doubles as like the athletic center so it has the gym attached to it, the pool, um, and all the other kind of activity centers. And then your kind of dorm, your dorm B, your wing B, uh, has a lot of the storage areas for it. Uh, but it's also home to the skirmish course, which separate from the gym, uh, is this huge room that's used for when the, the the, everyone gets together and plays skirmish, which is the sport that is uh, something that's played in-house at Kahena Academy. The it also involves uh, this kind of huge like media rooms also in Wing B as well. I would it's not like your typical media room where you can like you can play movies in there if you wanted to, and you even heard about some people playing video games in there. But it's almost like this huge kind of um, this dome-like building. Where the screen is projected almost like a planetarium but it's like more tilted onto the side like a, like an imax theater but not really like old timey um you've been told that it was there for some class way before but you're not sure what it is and it was just something in the old designs you're not sure if you believe that per se though and yeah so the our story has been taking place in the main building and we'll kind of zoom back in so arden what we'll go to you first uh what's the particular uh part of the building that you want to find uh so i rolled one? a seven and i think that i want to just sort of try and get a sense of just where is the heart of the school okay cool so funny enough you kind of have to lose yourself to it you with no right you put your hand on the wall and you begin to feel the heartbeat and you follow it and you follow it just down the hallways looping around going in almost maze like patterns um and it's there's no rhyme or reason to it there's there's no pattern or or is there is there a grand design in all of it you're you're not really you're not entirely sure but the heart of the school, uh, it's confusing enough because you didn't roll a 10. I will give you three locations where the heart feels the strongest. The heart feels the strongest just outside the dean's office in the theater department over in the activity center 
and not on the school ground at all, or not on the school at all, but rather in... Seems to be somewhere off in the woods, until the heartbeat kind of fades off. Yeah, I mean, definitely don't love that I was led towards the dean's office, but other than that, nice to know. And Arden sort of gently, like, pat on the walls again. And as you do so, you're actually going to get a, you're going to get a question. Because I feel like the last place you kind of investigate is kind of towards the uh, outside of it. Um, you do hear something like it's not a voice per se, but it's a, it's a feeling. It's a it's a noise that you somehow understand, and it says to you, "Beware, for the gallows loom near." And you get the feeling of dread, Arden. The feeling that kind of shakes you to your core. And whether it's the combination of the cold, brisk air, the ice that seems to begin to rain down, the snow starts to settle in on the school, the crunch of the ground underneath of dry earth begins to crack, or the sound of the heartbeat fading as your eyes slowly drift upwards to the astronomy tower. The astronomy tower, usually standing as an old beacon of what it was, is different this time. Ardent. Do you want to know why it's different? I do. Your eyes narrow in as you begin to make out the strange shape of something that's dangling off the astronomy tower. And then that shape begins to come into focus. As we kind of pan behind and we catch feet dangling as you see a student dangling in the free wind dead in the air and I think from there we're going to cut to the library now Who, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm not gonna even ask who gets there. I'm gonna say everyone kind of gets there at the same time. Uh, yeah, I I'm gonna be really awkward the moment I see Isaac, and I'd be like trying to make excuses to Melby. Like I, yeah. So I think I might be busy. I can go. Let's can we do this another time because. Um, I just forgot that I've got something to do, and I mean, it's it's it's, it's great talking to you, Melody, but yeah. I also try to find a place to just, like, hide. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just pick a table in the middle. <laughs> you sure? Um, and then look behind Melody to see if Isaac is gone. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, oh, uh, is there I, something I, between you and Isaac? I, you, what? What? There's Isaac? Something. No, 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 no way. I mean, no. So this is on. a, this is a There's... quiet library. So everyone can hear these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. I mean, it's, it sounds a lot like there's something going on here, and I'm just wondering. 
just not no no that there's there's absolutely nothing happening i just forgot that i, I mean, had to quite... do something and it's no maybe he you know did did, did he do something to you because i could very no, no. much expect that but no 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 isaac has been amazing to me it's just yeah there i uh you... Okay, okay, I need to stop this. Um, oh, that's, that's not, this, that's... This is a, a library, and it doesn't take a dick to know what you're talking about, so, so literally sorry. everyone can hear you. No, no, I'm it's so fine, sorry. it's fine, but I don't think you want to, you know, you probably want to discuss this and... You, c come on, why don't we go to my room? C come on. Okay. Melody, um, you want to... I, I... I want... Both. Ne Neil uh, making the, the the big offers now. <laughs> Neil, <Neil's laughs> on every. How about I meet you there? Cool. Uh, if, if you see Isaac, t actually nothing. <laughs> Isaac, I know you're hiding oh. somewhere here. Where are you? No, no, I found this really good book on um. Origami. Are you embarrassed over there? No, no, not not me. Embarrassed? You no. Look like you're hiding. I am no. I'm not. I I, I tri tripped. And again, origami. It's such a lovely topic with so maybe paper you snakes. Be embarrassed. You tripped Damn, into Ellie. origami. Roll a shutdown on Isaac, which is I didn't think was gonna happen today, but I guess. Um, it's, that's rolling with cold, isn't it? It is. Ooh, I don't. Is that that's not a super strong. I mean, I've got a minus one, but that's it's still possible. an eight. Okay. Literally, no one turning anyone on right now. <laughs> that is, that's still an eight. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not so that, to turn on. so that means not okay. So that. Isaac has a plus one. Well, on 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 his roll, and you have a string on melody. So melody, you have a, a few options here. Uh, mm -hmm. You can give Isaac a condition. You can take mm -hmm. one forward, or you can cause Isaac to lose a string on you. I am going to cause Isaac to lose a string on me. And Isaac, you can give Melody a condition in response. Mind your own business. Is that, is that, a, is that my condition? I guess. Uh, oh, no, how would um, you put that? Uh, fool. It would be a... I'm trying to, because I, I would say it's like, oh, you're butting in, but I'm trying to think of like the one word, like. Uh, what Nosey? about self conscious? Confused? I, I think nosy. I think nosy would be good. Nosey. Yeah. I like it. Am I still embarrassed, by the way? Or you, did I get rid of that with the. I, oh, well, I think you. I think we'll say you cleared it when you uh, took with off. Luca. Yeah, with Lucas. Yeah, Lucas, because you showed yourself. You were kind of top dog for a second there. I'm just brushing my horns a bit. <laughs> so glad I found these things. But I just closed the book. I put it back. Just, just can we just move on with our lives? Lunch is only so short. You're right. Yeah. So I'll see you I, in room, um, Neil Ivy. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 we're, we're me and Neil are, I mean, Neil, I'm so sorry. I think, I think on the way to Neil's room, he stops realizing that technically no one's supposed to go there. Actually, you know, I think, um, I think my room's going through, so. we... do you mind inviting me to your, into yours? Um. Bold again. I don't, I'm, um, that's, 
I I you can just think get I'm just that was making... gonna go to the canteen or the cafeteria. Sure. Do you want me to come with you? You feel like uh, you look yeah. like you you someone. To... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's totally fine. I'm just sorry, sorry. It's just really awkward. I'm. There's this feeling in my gut, which is weird considering I. There's this feeling in my gut that makes me, you know, I kind of feel queasy right now, so I, I get what you're saying. You. You okay? Um, yeah, yeah, just a bit awkward. Um, things have happened, and I am confused about stuff that's happening, you know? Like what? Um. You know, you have you been to Isaac's party? You know, the last one like a week ago? No, I make it my mission to avoid Isaac as much as possible. I don't like him. Oh. Yeah, that's understandable. I don't think a lot of people like him, but he, he, yeah, he was nice to me, so. And then what? Yeah, um, we kind of had a moment, and he got cold feet, and I don't know if that's... Did I do something wrong? I feel like I did something no, wrong. No, no, you didn't do anything was... wrong. Look, if someone else gets cold feet, that's on them. Trust me, I've had... I mean, but, but Isaac is so confident, you know? that It's not like him being... Like getting cold feet, so it's probably something that I did that got him all. Look, the stronger and... people front, the more they're hiding. When it comes to people like Isaac, just every time he proves his strength, he's also proving that he feels the need to be strong. I mean, have you ever seen that guy be vulnerable? Ever? Open? Honest? And trust me, I know that's kind of a lot coming from me, but still. No. No, not really. I mean, why does he need to? He's got all this stuff for him, you know? <laughs> all this stuff only lasts so long. So so why, why, why are you here if you don't mind? I mean, you, you shifted rather new into the semester. Uh, did your parents want you sent here because of like abilities you exhibited? Magic? Nothing was it? really. Uh, I still don't understand what I am here. Like I got nothing. <laughs> um, my parents, well, there was an incident and my parents decided to, sh to, you know, move all the way across the country to here. And this is, for some reason, this is the only school that accepted me around this area. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Uh, the local college kind of is very firm about admissions, apparently. So, wait, yeah. hold on. You, you're, 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 nor you're normal? Why do you make it sound so bad? I, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just... You know what this is, right? You know what, who these people are. Yeah, it's a monster school. I mean, it freaked me out when I first somebody I, I saw somebody shift into a wolf. That, that, that was scary. That was freaky. I thought that only happens in movies. Okay. That's good. I had a terrifying moment where I realized that you might not know and that someone would have to sit you down and explain everything, and that would be a lot. And I don't want to deal with that right now. I just... Oh, no. Yoni did that to me. He had to sit me down and explain about stuff. It was a really, really <laughs> awkward moment. And I never want to have the talk again. You know, when I was younger, um, I know it's hard to believe that I was. Uh, you make it sound like you're old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, ex I've experienced a lot. Um, 
but when I was younger, I, I, uh, I lost my parents. They were, I was 14. They got sick. I don't really want to touch on it, but there are a few places I could go. And I ended up with a crew that, um, as it turns out, were not normal, um, at a time where it kind of was. And a lot of them have a tendency to hide who they are, but if you find the people who are honest and they're some of the warmest, most wonderful people you'll ever meet. You don't, we're not all like Isaac. Don't hang on to someone like him. Find other people. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe we can be friends. Uh, Isaac and you, or no, me? no, you. <laughs> wow. Um. Uh, I just. Well, that's really. I, I mean, mean I, I, I don't want to pressure you. Like, if you don't want to be friends, that's totally fine. I, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't want to be, like, just pushing my friendship onto people. I no, no, Again, no, no. I'm new it's, to the school, and I don't have much friends. And it's... it's no, no. I, I, yes. You, yes. I, I am totally comfortable trying to be friends. I'm sorry. It's, it's just Astoria. It's just a bit of a pill, and her, her lamps freak me out. But I absolutely think you are a cool person and um oh, you know i think you're cool too neil and understanding <laughs> well <laughs> like i said i've uh, experienced a lot what's that something begins knocking on your door ivy ivy uh ivy opens I immediately open the door, but not are before you, tripping you... onto something. Uh, and Kaya immediately kind of like bears. Are, are, are you okay? I'm fine. Oh uh, God, hey, God. Kaya, this is Neil. No, I, I, Hi. I, I, did you not see what's? Uh, um, I I just uh, and you can see she's like on the verge of tears. Well, okay, what okay. happened? Are you okay? Breathe. Um. I, I mean, they, Sit her down. They, they, you, they, what happened? They, there's, like, been an accident. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't have to say this, but it, it was Yoni. What happened to Yoni? What did Yoni do? I say that at the same time as Ivy. <laughs> I found him hanging outside the astronomy tower. That doesn't seem like a crime. I... He's dead. Oh. Oh, they found him. I think because I've already marked traumatized, um, I can't mark it again, but I think there's a bit of a clue. I think anyone who's paying attention to Neil for more than a second will see that there's for a split moment, a reddening around his neck before it just disappears again. If you don't get this. The school's gonna go on lockdown in a second. Yeah, makes sense. It's gonna be a silly, you know. I don't. I don't think you get it. What does What does a lockdown mean? We're not gonna be able to leave the school for a bit. But Ivy, Yoni was special, you know. He He was a fae. and they don't. And the Fae don't take kindly to their blood being spilled out in this realm. We need to talk to Melody. Yeah, yeah, they they're sh they should be at the library. Um, but 
Yoni didn't look or seem suicidal. He's always been by himself. And the last person I saw him talking to was Isaac. And You don't... You don't think... No, no, no. I don't think Isaac will do something like that. How do you that. know? I, mean... I, I we... like to believe in people, okay? Innocent before proven guilty. Someone that's, is that's, dead, that's... Ivy. I know! I... Someone's fucking dead. That's... Kaya, I... look. Isaac may be a monster. I don't think he's that kind of monster. Whatever happened, we'll... They'll find out what happened. You'll be okay. We're going to be okay. Where, where, Just breathe. You talked about where's Melody then? The library. library. With Isaac. All right, we need to get them for this. They start calling everyone down. And she's like hyperventilating and like. Just, just let, let's, let's take a, breath, a deep breath. <sighs> okay. And. Breath. Just calm down. Calm down. Just. As and we, then let's go. As the three of you begin to leave, we we pace the hallways of Gehenna Academy. We think we see everyone. We hear the people, the gas. Arden, do you scream when you when you see the body? I think that they try and hold it in. Go to roll to keep your cool for me, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a six. <laughs> Arden, take the condition terrified as you begin to scream out and everyone is rushing over and rushing in and the the shout is like more than a scream. It's a roar. And as darkness begins to set, as the clouds start to roll in, we see Yoni, Yoni's body. And we pace up, seeing the chain of cold iron wrapped around his neck. His face turned purple. And with it, we see a note fall from his hand and scatter to the wind. And that ends episode one of Gehenna Academy, or chapter one, from The Gallows. Thank you, everyone, that sat to watch the show today. Uh, I'm very happy we have nine episodes remaining and we hope you come along for the ride uh first however before we sign off i would like to allow my cast members to plug what they are doing and uh first off i want to say thank you to the viewers and thank you for cast for a successful first episode and i hope you all had a grand fucking time yeah all right Oh, yeah. Hi again, guys. I am Rina playing as Ivy. I usually play um, t gaming stuff over at my Twitch, uh, D underscore Overlord, if you'd like to check it out. Um, we also have Call of the Abyss um, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. PST. So uh, things are about to get intense over there, so that's fun. Also, we are going to be adding a new VPM session, but that's that's gonna be announced later on. And yeah, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, same same tag as down below. But yeah. Awesome. And Neil. Or Nord Ali. <laughs> I'm bleeding over a bit. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Nord Ali. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. You can catch me on the Twitter at Werewolf Feels. Uh, I'm going to apologize to everyone else because I happen to be in five different streams this week. 
So this is the first. Uh, tomorrow I will be on Chromatic Chimera at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, we're going to be playing a game of Anomaly, a one-shot for their unprepared stream. They do a different one-shot each week, and they invited me, and I'm very excited, uh, investigating a supernatural anomaly. Um, Thursday evening, we have the penultimate episode of the Expanse campaign I'm in um, called Churn and Burn. We recently found out that my character was a spy for Earth. Uh, and that his mother-in-law was Christian Avancerala, so things are getting spicy. Uh, and likewise, I am in another penultimate episode for a Mass Effect campaign using the Genesis system on Chromatic Chimera, 9 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time on Saturday, which I'm super excited about. Uh, I play Quarian, who's a bit less spy but no more... No less secretive. Uh, and finally, I'm guesting on Kahania on Utopia's network um, on Sunday, 7 uh, p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And I'm excited for that as well. Uh, I cannot reveal anything about that character, which is always fun. Uh, there's tons of stuff going on. I am in a podcast, Missing Any Lee, and our next episode comes out on Friday. Uh, I am writing, and there's going to be an announcement for that soon. So follow me on Twitter. Uh, you will catch a lot of feelings, but you will also catch whatever I'm working on next. And uh, thank you all for joining us, because I've had a wild ride. I'm excited for more. Uh, I am Chantal B. You can find me on Twitter, at Chantal B. Um, this has been a wild ride, and I'm very excited. Um, you can find, I will very likely be writing something to do with this because uh, I tend to write from all of my characters' perspectives over at wordswithcolor.com. Um, and I just do a lot of writing there. Uh, another thing that I am writing, I'm one of the narrative uh, designers uh, creating a culture for Omens Rising, which is a uh, narrative-focused uh, TTRPG that is now going into pre-alpha playtest. Um, you can catch one of those on Saturday evening at... 8 p.m. I believe uh, Eastern Time over at Wandering DM. Um, you can catch me on Saturday morning also um, at Lost Worlds Archive playing Open Legend. Um, uh, and you can catch me running my first game, which is over at any underscore actor, which is also Monster Heart. So if you would like some more of that, probably not as dark, probably more 90s there's probably not 90s you know um and that is daybreak academy and that'll be at 8 30 eastern time on wednesday and anything else that you're looking for come check out twitter so many talented people <laughs> in contrast hi i have nothing specific to plug but follow me on twitter at a disaster queer where i will announce uh some upcoming things in the near future uh, yeah, uh, hi, again, Chris here. Uh, you can follow me at VO underscore Cologne, that's C-O-L-O-N. Uh, I'm a voice actor, so I have my reel up there, and my website's also there if you ever want to work with me on your projects. Uh, beyond that, I'm working on stuff that I can't talk about, so beyond that, yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, and to everyone, uh, first, before I plug everything, I just want to say thank you again to our cast. I hope you had a great time, and I was so excited to play with you all. Um, I know we all talked about it, and I even got to play with Norton Ali uh, this past Saturday in Voidheart, Sy Voidheart Symphony, which you can actually watch now as a VOD. Uh, but seriously, this was so much fun, and I'm glad that everyone came in and it was so successful, it feels like. Uh, but I was your storyteller today, slash MC, Master of Ceremonies. I'm Nick Francia. You can find me at Noble Van Nick. In terms of future stream, um, at 10 o'clock and 50 minutes, or at 11 o'clock and 50 minutes EDT, uh, you will be able to see me over on Kahari... Uh, <laughs> God damn it, every time. Uh, Kahana, get carrying. Uh, Carrion Comfort Studios. Uh, where you can find me doing a post premiere interview with Wes, where we're going to talk about how I brought Kahana Academy to life, uh, myself, and apparently who my favorite hat is, which I do have a favorite hat. Uh, but other than that, you can find me a Wednesday. I'm going to do the finale for our Victorian Mage game, uh, Cypress and Steel. It's an awesome first one of our 
looks and previews into that game that is that's on Kickstarter and has not been released yet. Uh, it's been a wild ride. We've done three episodes already, and we're finishing up the last. So you can see me in full makeup and costume playing Dr. Klaus Richter, and I had so much fun doing that. In terms of future stuff, I'm going to have plug for Gehenna. Uh, we have an amazing week, so let's just go ahead and, and I'm just I'm going to take a second. And I'm so sorry, everyone, but you know this is the channel, and this is what I, I got to do. And you know what? I'm happy to do it though. So after this Monday, Thursday, we're going to be getting our indie showcase, where I believe we are going to be starting our playthrough of Midnight World with James Davy, uh, the creator of Midnight World. It's an awesome. Uh, pulse pounding look into terror as well as an analogy for trauma as well and how that all links together uh, it's an amazing game that we actually got to talk over uh, back on the first vhc virtual horror comedy ran back in 2020 um, we we're talking about games for therapy there's also there's a huge good showcase of that on youtube you like to check it out on friday i'm so proud to announce although i want to beat them uh is vampire the masquerade fifth edition Dark Ages. Dark Ages, which was normally released for Rally Requiem in 20th anniversary, has gotten the upgrade it so deserves and needed, uh, courtesy of our Gehenna Gaming's very own Rick Wheeler. Uh, Rick's amazing. I played in Dark Ages games. He's run it before, and it's just always a fantastic uh, hell of a ride, and I'm so glad it gets to get turned into its own series. We've been releasing the character promos alongside we were doing ones for Gehenna Academy, so if you haven't, Go through the Twitter and see those awesome costumes, and I cannot wait to see them come to life. On Saturday, as usual, uh, during the midday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have our Gehenna Gaming Plays with Clara Herbal, where I believe she's still playing through Doki Doki Literature Club, which is a game near and dear to my heart, and I fucking love. Uh, Saturday night, we're going to have our Saturday night one-shot as well, where we are going to be beginning our special two-part one-shot, so it's actually Saturday Night Two-Shot for this week and next week, uh, we're going to be running V5 Western. Uh, it's a classic, classic Camarilla versus Anarch uh, on top of a steam train in the Old West with vampires. What's not to love? Uh, it's straight out of a Quentin Tarantino film, it feels like, but we'll see. And then Sunday, of course... Uh, we have a every other week you can watch Warhammer Fantasy during the day at 3 p.m. Eastern as well with the Darker Days radio crew. Uh, they're fucking cool as shit. I love them. I was on the show once, and that'll always be near and dear one of my great accomplishments in the tabletop community. Uh, other than that, come check us and watch us next time. We have nine more episodes to go. This has been an amazing passion project of mine. And yeah, thank you. I'm like kind of crying a little bit on the inside. Uh, other than that... Let's just wave everyone goodbye and say deuces. Goodbye, everyone. You know what? I'm going to play that opening one more time for y'all. I do have to say one thing when we come back. Uh, shit, I totally forgot about that. I have to do this. Um, I have to just thank the artist real quick and then I'll end the stream. I'm so sorry, everyone. I just don't want to let that go. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, this is strange. I know this is crazy that I'm back again. I thought the show ended. But I just wanted to say uh, a special thanks to the amount of artists that let me use their music for the stream. Um, it, it's great. I'm actually going to link the playlist right now which is going to be ever growing uh it's my spotify playlist for gehenna academy that's got 12 songs on there but uh we have ian uh gabriel pusinelli sarah nine uh, isaac shoots and the phasing octopus a good friend of mine 
as well all contributed music for tonight and a lot more coming on the way uh you all are amazing i love y'all all right now i'm taking us off Thank you.